Hello and welcome to today's flow motion tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how you can create an animation out of a still frame, like in this recent animation here. Or in those animations that I've done over the last few weeks on famous covers. So what you will learn today is the 2.5D effect, also known as the parallax effect. We are going to take a look at photos and separate different layers out of them and then we adjust them in space or position them in space and animate a camera so that the images look as if they were in 3D space. So first thing that you have to keep in mind is to search for an image with a good foreground mid-ground and background. So for this presentation I thought we could work with this famous lunch break top of a skyscraper building that everyone knows. Let's just scale this down by hitting S for scale and here we have it. We have a really nice background of course, the city of New York with the Central Park here in the background and then as a midground all of those workers here and then as a foreground element this steel rope here that crosses some of those workers. So what we want to do at first and which is also the most time consuming for this project is to separate those three. At first what you would have to do is to cut out all those workers here. I've already done this by simply creating a mask. You would just go to the pen tool or hit G, zoom in. And by the way, I am zooming in with my mouse wheel. Then you would have to select your layer at first and then you can start setting all your points. And when you hold the mouse button and drag it then you get a curve and if you need to adjust that curve you can hold down space and then you can reposition the point and then you would just go through all the details but I have already prepared an image let me drag this one out I call it man PNG and it's a PNG file because it has transparency. So here it is. So this is our midground layer. So I just call this midground. Now in order to work we need to clean up all those files. And as you may already have noticed, we don't see the steel rope going over the workers here because I already cleaned that up. And what you will see next, also, I also have done this for the background. So when I bring in the background and hide the midground, you can see that I also got rid of all the workers and created kind of a clean plate for the background and I'm going to show you now how I have done this in Photoshop. So here in Photoshop I'm going to show you two very easy tools that you can use to get this job done. So let's start maybe with removing the rope where it passes over those two actors here or those two workers. Let's zoom into the frame and I'm doing this with my mouse wheel while I'm holding down the Alt button. And for this first task to remove the rope, I'm using the clone stamp tool, which is here. And while holding down the Alt button, I can define a region where I wanna get my stamp information from. I wanna have more from the head over the rope, so I'm just hitting the Alt button, click down, and when I'm going with my tool over the rope now, you can see that I can paint in the color of the head. So you have to do that very precisely to get maybe also the shadow here and maybe a line structure over there. Yeah. 
and also for his hair here we can just paint a little bit more around his ear then we extend his neck a little bit and we slowly get his head so to say in front of the rope so this is the first tool the clone stamp tool where you can just take parts of the city or the man and paint with that structure over other parts of the image like for example if i would want to paint out that rope here i could just take part of the central park and clone stamp it over each other so this could also be a way on how to get the clean plate for the whole image. But I've done this a little bit different with a tool that is almost easier to use. And this is the healing tool. And what this tool does is really, really simple and helps in a lot of cases. So you just paint over an area that you want to remove. And if you let go, it searches for parts of the image that are around it and tries to paint over with parts that already exist around the area you want to fix. And you just have to be aware not to make the areas too big. Like for example, let's try it out with his shoe here. Now Photoshop has detected all the area that it's around it and has tried to mimic those kind of textures and structures. Let's maybe do it over here with that rope and there you have it a really easy method on how to solve those problems so back in after effects this is what i got this is a clean background and as you see i just clone stamped a little bit of parts from the bottom over here and in areas where the rope has been i've worked a little bit more in detail because later on all our persons will be around the middle of the image so we don't get to see all that repetition but i wanted to be more detailed at the edges where the people are sitting so let's bring back in our midground really nice and i've done the same with our steel rope and there we have our rope, which I think normally belonged somewhere around here. So now as we have done the trickiest part, let's start with the fun part, animating this image. And therefore let's bring all of those three layers in the 3D space. And you do that by simply clicking on that button. And now all of those are in 3D space. And now let's also create a camera because what we need to see something in 3D space is a camera. So we go to layer, new camera. Let's take a focal length at about 50 millimeter and hit OK. Now let's get familiar with the camera tool. When you hit C, and click on it twice and three times, you see that you get uh, some tools for the camera. For example, this one, if you drag and drop it, in this way, the camera zooms. With that tool, you can rotate your camera. And this is the move around tool. Okay, let's reset all of this because we want to have some parallax and this is why this effect and this still animation is called the parallax effect. And to get that effect we have to bring the background further back in 3D space, leave the midground as it is and bring the foreground more to the front. So let's click on the background and now as it is in 3D we have three different axes Y, X and Z which is the depth. So let's just push the background way more to the back. And then we just scale it up again. 
that it fills the frame again. And now let's do the same with our foreground. This time we bring it to the front. And scale it down again. Maybe even position it. Now we almost have the same image. But look what happens when we do a zoom now, for example. Or even orbit around with the camera. Let's maybe scale up the background more. You see that we are now faking a 3D space and this is absolutely what we wanted. So let's reset the camera, create keyframes for the position, orientation and the point of interest and then let's just go forward for like 8 seconds and then we rotate it a little bit. Hit C once again zoom into the image and maybe even take the move tool and move our camera a little bit. Now let's just watch a quick RAM preview of what we have created. Really, really beautiful. And to make this a bit more obvious, let's switch from the active camera view to a custom view so that we can see what we are doing. Now you can see we have our background here, the midground with all our persons here and in the foreground there is the rope and the camera is moving like we have set it in our rotation tool. Really a nice way of working. And that's already almost the end of the tutorial. So let's quickly look at a few other things we can do here. Let's go back to our active camera. And the last thing that I want to show you here is the out of focus effect that I have done in my example or the rack focus so that we start with our steel rope in focus and then make a focus pull onto our actors. And to do that, we have to go to the camera options and turn on the depth of field. And the more you go up with the aperture now, you can see the more out of focus our rope gets. So if I turn this on and off, you can directly see the difference. And now we can also play with the focus distance. So at the beginning, let's set a keyframe and our actors are in focus but we want to change that so let's drag that over to like about the two second mark but we want to start with our rope in focus so we have to decrease the focus distance and now if your if your blur or your out of focus is just too much for you you can always go down with it with your aperture or just with your blur level. And now let's quickly make a RAM preview. So that's it with this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot today and I'm also hoping that you now search for a nice image that will work for this effect, open up your After Effects and start animating still images.